Welcome to Around the Diamond. I'm Marvin Jackson, and once again, I'm joined by former big leaguer Fred Valentine and Tom Levero, co-host of ESPN 980's The Sports Fix. Thanks, guys, for joining us. Great to be back. Always great to be here, Marvin. All right. Coming up later in the show, we'll go on deck with Baltimore Orioles all-star center fielder Adam Jones, but first, let's discuss the suspensions handed out by Major League Baseball. And joining us on the phone is Kenny Lofton, former Major Leaguer. How you doing, Kenny? Pretty good. And yourself? Oh, great, great. It's uh, good to have you join us for this discussion. But first, let's talk a little bit about your career and what you're doing now. Well, you know, my career, I have to say 17 years in the big leagues, and um uh... Um, I had a pretty much, you know, successful career. You know, I went to um, Arizona, first of all, to play basketball, and I went from basketball to start playing baseball. I just felt like baseball was the spot for me to go. You know, you have a, a, a few spots in, in basketball. I just felt like baseball was my calling, and pretty much it, it, uh, it, it worked out very well for me. All right. And uh, now you're doing television production work? I have a... Um, a um, production company called Film Pool. We do editing and we do uh, full out post production so and, uh, and production and I've been doing that ever since uh, 04. It's called Film Pool. All right. Um, well, Tom Levero, um, he's going to uh, talk a little bit about the suspensions and probably uh, ask you a few questions. Okay. Yeah. By the way, I covered a lot of those great Indian teams in the 90s. <laughs> one of the best uh, collections of talent I ever saw and I always enjoyed watching you play uh, you know what's kind of amazing to me about the drug suspensions right now is what I hear from players who are playing the game right now it seems like the like the tone of players has changed to where uh, you have guys like Mike Trout and others saying that they want to see tougher suspensions for players who test positive this is this is kind of different from uh, the tone that we heard 20 years ago, isn't it? Well, it's different, but it's not different. It's basically because when you start having evidence on people, you can change your tone. Before, I mean, I, I didn't know exactly what was going on, but I knew something was going on, but I couldn't say anything because I had no proof. Mm -hmm. So you knew people were cheating, but you couldn't prove it, so you had to keep your mouth closed. That's why people's mouth was closed because you didn't have that proof. So if they had stricter testing back then, uh, in other words, the idea that a lot of players in the locker room, the players who weren't using, if they felt that the guy next to them, not the guy next to them, but if they felt like their jobs were being jeopardized because of guys who were cheating, if there was stricter testing, they might have spoken out a little bit more. Yeah, I think it was. If this would have been, you know, 20 years ago, you know, years ago, people would have, you know, said something about it, but since, you know, the proof wasn't in the pudding at the time, people couldn't say anything because it had been a backlash on you when you didn't have no evidence. And that's where I keep telling people about Jose Canseco came out and told that, and Major League Baseball and the Players Association drug their feet on the situation, and this is, this is where it comes to. Now it's finally hitting the head at this point. It is interesting. I'm glad that you said Major League Baseball and the Players Association because I mean, both of them needed to step up, and the baseball couldn't do it without the Players Association agreeing to it. And then baseball was profiting from it, so they weren't crazy about doing anything about it either. I mean, yeah, I was, I was pissed off because, you know, the guys who wasn't using it, we were, we were the majority, but you had to protect the union as a whole, so you had a, a minority of people doing it, and then you had that testing come out in 03 or whatever. That was kind of kind of bogus anyway, but it came out and found out that some people were using, but it was more than what they actually said at that time. But nothing was done, but then they finally start to um, you know, talk about it, and then all of a sudden, if you think about it, in 05, a lot of numbers from players, a lot of them dropped. They went from being throwing up all these numbers to all of a sudden, the numbers started to go back down where they, you know, where they were supposed to be. And, you know, things start to change once they start doing the test. Fred? Uh, I can't, I, can't, I, I totally agree with you because going back 20 years or so, when we were just playing 
I never, re never really realized what was taking place, but it gradually was coming into place. Something was happening with the players. And to yeah. some extent, they knew it had to do with performance and had to do with some facet of drugs. But uh, I'm with you. If, they, if the Players Association and the unions are so seriously about doing something about this problem, they should come to some kind of agreement, as you indicated, of some type of stringent penalty for the players once they get the evidence. They're getting the evidence now, and but it seems like there's, for some reason, they're not getting the penalties that's really, really due. But like they say, uh, the best way to get to any individual is get in their pocketbooks. <laughs> and uh, sure enough, if they can come up with a realistic suspension, a fine to deal with that paycheck, then you're going to see a lot of changes. All right. Well, we, yeah, got a, thing, we got a few seconds left. Uh, is there anything thing final that you'd like to say, uh, Kenny? Before I we... just say, you know, it's just, more the, it's just more the risk reward. I think a lot of guys took a chance knowing that they're going to get a big five-year contract, but they have a chance they have, they have a chance to um they, they have a chance to get caught, but they only get like a fifty game suspension. That's only like one year's of contract, but they still got the other four years that they're making. So if, if, you know, A Rod wouldn't have made this contract without the steroids. So now he's wanting money that he cheated to get. So pretty much that's what happened there. All right. Well, I tell you what, we enjoyed your insight. Kenny Lofton, um, and uh, we'd like to have you back to talk to us more. Okay, no problem. All right, thanks for your time, and uh, we'll take a break right here, but when we return, we'll go on deck with Orioles All-Star Adam Jones on the other side. That feature and more when Around the Diamond returns. Stay with us.